The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has declared the All Progressives Congress uh, candidate Ben Uwajimogu as the winner of the Imo North Senatorial District election. The APC candidate scored 56,076 votes to beat his closest rival, the People's Democratic Party candidate, uh, who polled just over 43,000 votes. Ensure support for this press party, the APC, which is an emerging political force in the southeast. As it stands now, uh, we have recorded the first senior seat in the National Assembly from Imo State of the southeast. We will recall that this of the crisis we have in the National Assembly is because of the lack of this seat of the southeast to what goes on the Federal Republic of Nigeria. An attempt to place things where they do not belong is what has given rise to this crisis in the National Assembly. And since this there was local from the southeast has emerged on the transform of APC, since the National Assembly will be sorted out as quickly as possible. And there will be peace in the National Assembly. And so uh, what indicate took from us the rightful, rightful position of uh, uh, APC in the southeast. That's the Imo State Governor Rocha Sokrocha reacting to the APC's victory there. Well, in other news now, inadequate power supply, among other challenges, affects businesses in Nigeria. And this is according to members of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, who paid a visit to the Anambra State Governor, Willie Obiano, at the government house. They say a more friendly business environment must be created to ensure industrialization grows in the country. These are some members of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria's Southeastern Zone, led by the chairman, Mr. Aloysius Sukafo. They are on a courtesy visit to Governor Willie Obiano at the government house in Anambra State. The leader of the group says inadequate power supply is one of the many challenges affecting industrialization growth in the region. Our members, like many other Nigerians, pay heavily on generating their own energy through generators. More worrisome is the high tariff imposed on our members by Enugu Electricity Distribution Company, EGBC, with that corresponding constant supply of power. This increases our production costs and makes us less competitive price-wise in the global market. One of the things that we're working on is to domesticate the federal national industrial policy for Anambra State. We have an industrial policy in Anambra State, but it only looks at a five-year time period, which, in our view, we consider to be too short. The governor promises to look into multiple taxation. I don't understand why it should be taxed twice. You know, we have had challenges here of ours who claim to be working for the states. They are not in the corporate, they are not, they're not represent the state in any manner, and, uh, and we don't know them. We've computerized already our tax collection system, and by the time you sit down with yourselves, you see the new method is safe, clean, and, and what have you. At the end of the meeting, Governor Obiano promised that his administration will continue to enact favorable policies and laws that will assist businessmen and women in the state. Well, speaking of uh, local manufacturing, eThink, a contemporary brand in Nigeria, is using locally crafted fabric known as Ashoki to produce fashionable shoes and bags. Founder Tunde Owolabi says that he wants to promote made in Nigeria products to help revive a declining textile industry and preserve the Nigerian culture. Tunde Owolabi. A budding fashion designer in Lagos is selecting fabric designs for his shoe collection. The shoe line is inspired by Ashoki, a hand-loomed traditional fabric woven by the Yoruba community who come from southwest Nigeria. Tunde is making a mark in the country's fashion scene with his brand known as E-Think, which creates colorful accessories, sneakers, boots and sandals, all made from Ashoki. Tunde started his e brand a year ago, 
He says he wanted to explore working with a mix of materials and promote his country's heritage and to build a marketable brand. Now Nigeria is looking into manufacturing with um, the falling oil prices and all and um, there can be a better time to be an entrepreneur because now we have to look inwards, find new means of uh, um, making money, find new means of uh, getting things done and helping the country to, to prosper as opposed to oil. Tunde invested over 11,500 US dollars in the business and has already made a profit of nearly $20,000 from the sale of about 700 fashion pieces. He has a staff of six people but says he is looking to employ young designers to create even more cutting-edge work. But the fashion industry is not without its challenges. Doing business in Nigeria is tough and breaking into mainstream fashion markets in Africa and abroad is difficult. Nigeria is going through its worst economic crisis in years due to a fall in global oil prices. The government wants to wean itself off of oil and is encouraging local businesses to grow. We need to keep our faith on the ground properly. You know, when we've overcome the hurdle of manufacturing, you know, because it's still a bit of a puzzle for us. You know, sometimes you get the materials, sometimes you don't, you know, and then you have to start looking for alternatives and how to balance it out. But um, once we're able to cross that hurdle, and we know that we can get the kind of materials we want readily available to us without breaking the bank, then we can, we can um, start to uh, produce things that will rival the international market. I think items are sold for between $27 to $50 each. He's on the right way. He's in the right path in terms of you know the fabric and the materials he sourced in this country. Tunde is working hard to make a name for himself, both home and abroad. His goal is to tap into a rapidly growing middle class on the continent and help meet the demands for quality fashion. Well, some concerned elders of Nasser State have appealed to the government and organized labor to engage in dialogue. This is in reaction to the ongoing strike which was prompted by an implementation of a new salary template by the state government. They made the appeal at a press conference in Lafayette, the Nassau state capital, calling on both parties to take note of the effect of the strike action on the state's economy. Recently, Governor Tanko Aomakura announced the implementation of a new salary template for both civil and public servants. According to him, the implementation is as a result of the current economic challenges affecting the state revenue allocation. In this regard, government in its wisdom decided to effect a review of the salaries of the categories of workers in the state, including political appointees and my humble self. This decision, however, led to a strike action by the organized labor crippling activities in the state. Now, some concerned elders of the state are calling on government and organized labor to dialogue. As a major stakeholder who constitute more than 98% of the population of the state, we should draw the attention of both labor and government to salient issues that they should consider to resolve their differences in order to allow for progress and development to continue in our state. The organized labor says their doors are open for negotiations. Well, I want to say since the beginning of this strike, there's nobody in government that has ever called labor for any dialogue whatsoever. Meanwhile, the state government is seeking an understanding from workers and is asking them to return to work. One man position is for the they're waiting for civil servants to resume to work. <laughs> That's what the government is waiting. They're just waiting for civil servants to resume to work fully so that activities will go on uh, 100%. Will the workers see reasons with the government and go back to work? Will their full salaries or part of it be paid as a sign of commitment? Answers to these questions will go a long way in finding a solution to the face-off between both parties.